Now there's one last aspect of our data dump that I want to talk about here before we proceed on to the practicalities. And while we're doing that, let's just stop our fire and look at another type of very common particle system, clouds. These are time-lapse clouds, of course. But clouds consist of billions of little individual water droplets, each of which diffracts and diffuses the light coming through it so that it appears white, and then aggregates together with all of its neighbors to produce these kinds of ephemeral shapes that are subject to the forces of gravity and wind and heat and all that sort of thing in the upper atmosphere, which is why a particle system is particularly useful for simulating cloud activity as well, because particle systems have this kind of activity, this kind of physics built into them. Now, one of the things I want to mention to you is that if you are familiar with other types of particle systems, particle playground works a little bit differently from those. Most of those particle systems have built-in properties for automatically changing things like particle size, color, velocity, and opacity, and so forth. Particle playground, instead, requires you to use maps, which are called property maps, to accomplish these tasks. And these are other layers in your composition that you've created that do specific things to the particles themselves. This makes Particle Playground quite a bit more flexible than other particle systems, but also makes it a little bit more difficult to get into because this concept of property maps is something that not everyone is familiar with. But with property maps, you can do very powerful things with these particles that you can't do in ordinary particle systems. And so the concept of property maps is an important one that we'll be looking at in detail later on. Now, one last thing I want to show you, and in fact, we'll stop this and we'll look at another type of particle system yet, something that you're also very familiar with called uh, uh, fireworks. <laughs> and fireworks, of course, are also just a pile of individual little burning elements that aggregate together that are being controlled by the force of gravity and wind and also the initial explosion force. So again, a fireworks like this is a very common type of particle system and something that particle systems themselves can very easily simulate. And speaking of simulation, there's something that you should know about particle playground and all types of simulators that is just something to be aware of. Particle playground, like all these types of different simulators that are out there, needs to know what has happened to the particles in all the previous frames before it can calculate whatever the current frame might be. This is because particles in previous frames can have a significant effect on the particles in the current frame, especially when you're using features like collision detection, wherein particles can bang into each other and have physics applied to them so that particles can actually behave in a kind of quasi-natural way when they bang into each other. But by the same token, when you have multiple particles colliding together, you can have ultimately very complex interactions between those particles. So what this means is that you don't have quite the same amount of freedom in jumping around in the timeline that you do with regular keyframed parameters. When you move the current time to a point further down the timeline, Particle Playground, like all simulators, has to calculate the paths and modifications of all the particles in the animation up to the current time before it can display the particles at the current time. The further down the timeline you go, the more frames that have to be calculated, and so the longer it will take to display the current frame. The obvious solution, which would be caching the previous frame data, sometimes isn't practical because the slightest change in the particle settings can invalidate all the previous frames. So very often you need to just be patient and avoid sampling your animation too far down the timeline, or at least without having maybe cached some of the original frames in RAM. So, this also means that in general, render times will gradually increase as your render progresses. So if you set something into the render queue, the estimation that you'll get of the render time at the beginning will actually not, almost certainly not be accurate. Because again, it takes longer to calculate those later frames than it does the earlier frames. So generally speaking, the render is going to get slower as you go along. Now, Having done all that, now that we're done with our data dump, let's proceed on to actually doing some stuff with Particle Playground.